In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Project Lombok for best practices in auto wiring with Spring. Now, Spring itself does have a variety of different ways that we can do dependency injection. It's really one of the strengths of the Spring framework. And I've set up a, a number of uh, examples here that I want to step through. And let's uh, take a look at these. So what I have here is I have a service implementation. And this really just simply goes out. It's a Spring Framework service and returns back a, a low string. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can use this to auto wire up different examples. Now, the first case here, I have a field controller, I'm, I'm calling that, and I'm injecting that service in to directly into a field. You can see I don't have a getter or setter set up. It's not marked as private. That is direct injection to that property. And this is not, this is absolutely not a good practice. You can see here IntelliJ is even highlighting it, saying that that's not a, a good idea to do that, to at least set a constructor for it. So you can see field injection is not recommended, so not a good idea to do it all. I do not recommend doing this. And what I see people doing is like, they'll go, okay, well, Spring will do some magic underneath the covers, and we can just declare that field private, and so we don't need a constructor. We don't need to set up uh, getters and setters. And I see people do this uh, far too often. And my biggest beef with this is it makes it a headache to test that. So how do you go and test that without bringing up the spring context or using some type of reflection utilities to inject that? Uh, it can be done. It can be done. But it gives you a big headache when you do a private field in AutoWire. That is something that spring will support. Now, probably one of the more popular ways of doing dependency injection with spring framework is to use a setter. So here I have a private field and I've set up a setter for that. So now this is a little bit better than what we previously had. I do have a setter. So now I can utilize this pretty easily in a unit test if I need to inject that. So we are, are getting to a better condition. Now the next option here is to use a constructor. So this is probably the uh, best method that we've looked at so far. As far as uh, using a constructor, it sets a property. And you can see here, I did not have to specify auto wired on the constructor. And I think it was in Spring 4.2, if memory serves me correct, where it, it, they made the auto wire on constructors optional. So Spring sees the type for that and it can perform the auto wire on that constructor. Spring will automatically do that. Saves us a little bit of typing as far as doing this. Now, the problem that I have here. There's uh, two main uh, concerns with this type here. Uh, we have uh, my service. This is a concrete type that we are injecting in, dependency injection of a, a hardwired type, not the, the best scenario. And then the other thing is, let's get back to that controller. Other thing is, this field is not declared as final. So that is a, a problem there. So the best practice that as far as dependency injection with Spring Framework goes, is to use an interface. So here I've set up a BP service, so best practice service. We are going to code to this interface, and then we are expected to provide an implementation of that. And here you can see I have a BP service implementation. Again, it's annotated with the Spring service stereotype. You can see here I'm just saying return back the best hello. Now, the secret sauce here with Project Lombok involved for best practice as far as dependency injection goes. Here you can see I've got on line 13, I've declared the BP service. I'm uh, declaring the type of the interface there, and that is final. And now Project Lombok, I'm using this required args constructor. So here through Project Lombok, that will provide the constructor instance for me. And then Spring will automatically auto wire to the constructor. So this is a real nice way of doing this. I'm just demonstrating this here. If you had three or four properties, and let's say you need to bring in another Spring data repository or something, you just add in that property. And now because of Project Lombok providing that uh, constructor, that's all the code that you have to do. So when you start doing real production code using Project Lombok and the required ARCs constructor, against final properties. It's a, a nice little time-saving tweak. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at everything running together. Just to prove to you that this all works. 
written a test here and you can see the uh, was it five or six different controllers that I've implemented for demonstrating the different types of uh, dependency injection with spring framework. You can see I've got all those auto wired in. It is a spring boot test. So this brings up the spring context and you can see here I'm doing a system out for all these. So these first uh, four instances, those are going to get the same bean. And then the, the best practice one that gets a different bean. And let me resize this a little bit. And you can see here, field controller says hello, private field controller says hello, setter controller says hello, and the constructor controller says hello, and then finally the best practice controller says the best hello. So we can see the proper types got wired into all the different classes. The first several use the same instance, and then finally our best practice used a different instance for the dependency injection. So let me just review this one more time here. As far as the best practice goes, for dependency injection with Spring, you want to be working with interfaces. So you'll be coding to an interface. Uh, this allows you a lot of flexibility in your dependency injection because all you got to do is provide an instance of that type to the Spring context. So the Spring will then here I'm providing just one implementation of it. If I want to do a mock or have some type of other implementation, I'd have a lot of flexibility here because I am utilizing that. Now on the uh, target class, the controller, my simulated controller, I should say, uh, private final. So that uh, cannot be changed by anything else. And I'm bringing in the interface type. So now this gives me a lot of flexibility in my spring configuration. If I had three or four different implementations of that, I could be using spring profiles to control what gets injected in there. I could be doing Makito mocks or testing. So a lot of flexibility there. And then the time saver here is I'm using the required args constructor from Project Lombok to automatically generate the constructor for my final properties. So this little tweak here, it doesn't seem like much, but having Project Lombok and using final variables is a very powerful and time-saving concept with Spring and Project Lombok.